It's 10 p.m. and the streets are eerily quiet. The kind of quiet that makes you afraid to do as much as breathe loud. I am fervently praying for a cap, and I'm also wondering if God isn't surprised at my audacity to make a request. I dare to ask for his help now of all this. As if to answer my question, a blinding flash illuminates my surrounding, and I hail frantically. He stops, and I hop in, not remembering any of the numerous stories of kidnappers that guise themselves as cab drivers. Federal Medical Center, I say to him, between hurried breaths, and we zoom off. Madam, you have to call your husband if he's in town. You need all the support you can get. Try to get enough sleep. I am sorry about your loss. A lot of first pregnancies encounter complications within states or at birth. Thank God it isn't older than a month and you reported early. You'll be, you'll be back on your feet in no time. I stared at his lab coat as he disappeared down the hallway. The words rolled down his lip like he had rehearsed them a number of times and it stuck from saying it so many times to other women like me or not like me. We can't be so many. I haven't made up my mind on where to go once I leave here. The one thing that bounds me and Nura is gone. We can finally move on with no strings attached. 22nd of March 2004 was the day I finished my Idda, the Islamic waiting period after a divorce or the death, of, the death of one's husband. Those past three months were the longest days of my life. He never called my aunt, neither did he call me. I knew we had completed our paths in each other's life, but I was at least hoping he was going to call, at least to ask how the dead baby was faring. Not that I ever told him we were expecting, but as the father, they said he should have a certain kind of premonition. And Selma thinks I should go out more often. I am just 22 after all. Most people would not believe I was ever married. So today I am out. I should head to Fatih's place like I informed Auntie Selma, but I am waiting on that beggar bridge. Who knew Dave would come to my rescue again, exactly six years after we last spoke to each other. He's the only person I can think of calling right now. The only friend that won't judge me, not because he understands, not, but he will listen, tell me to shrug it off. He won't feel sorry for me or blame me. He'll just listen. Until today, the words I said to Dave at our prom night never held so much significance. I said to him, 40 years from now, you will be my first and most special lover. It was a pact we sealed with a kiss. And six years after prom night, I am on Dave's bed, naked, a divorcee, a budding drug addict. My name is Zainab, and I am not sure which sits best, an addict, an adulteress, or a murderer. I lost the baby due to an overdose. It was never my intention. I wanted that child. It would have been my peace, my path to healing, and maybe forgiveness. I wronged Nura, I wronged my soul, and my Lord. But I am Zainab, and I do not despair of his mercy. Zakum <laughs> lahir.